Welcome to this Wisel Excel VBA tutorial. In this video, we'll explain how you can get access to the emails stored in a separate account in the same Outlook profile. We'll start with a quick recap of how you reference the default inbox folder using the get default folder method. Then we'll explain that you can essentially treat accounts like folders held at the top level of an Outlook profile and how you can loop through those account folders so that you can find out what their names are, allowing you to reference another account simply using its folder name. Once we've got access to a separate account, we'll look at how you can list the items contained in that account's inbox. And then towards the end of the video, we'll show you an alternative technique to achieve the same result by using something called an Outlook store. So let's get started. To demonstrate this technique, we have an Outlook profile set up with two separate accounts, one called Andrew Gould, which is the default account for this profile, and a second one called Trainee. Our aim is to list out all of the items from the inbox folder, or in fact any other folder from the Trainee account. To get started, I've got a brand new blank workbook. From here, we can head straight to the Developer tab and open up the Visual Basic Editor. We can insert a new module in the usual way. And then let's create a subroutine called something like list items from other inbox. And I will correct my spelling of the word items there as well. There we go. Let's quickly recap the basic code required to list the items from the inbox in the default account. We'll need to begin by setting a reference to the Outlook object library just to get some help with the IntelliSense. So we can find Microsoft Outlook and on my machine it's 16.0 object library. If I check the box and then click OK, we can now declare a few variables using that library. So let's start with something called ol as an outlook.application and then we can have dim ns as an outlook.namespace. And then finally, let's have a generic dim fol as outlook.folder. Next, we can set our ol variable to reference a new instance of the Outlook application. So set ol equals new outlook.application. We can then set ns to be equal to ol.get namespace. And the namespace we're going to go for, as you'll know if you've watched previous videos in this series, is called mappy. Finally, let's set our fol variable to reference the default inbox. So to do that, I can say set fol equals ns dot get default folder, open some parentheses, and then choose ol folder inbox from the list. Now that I've captured a reference to the inbox folder, it might be useful to write out some information about it. So let's use a debug.print statement to do that. debug.print fol.folderpath and let's also have a count of the items belonging to the folder, fol.items.count. It might also be useful to write out some information about the individual items in the folder. Let's declare a couple of extra variables to help with that. I'm going to declare dim i as a generic object. And then I'll also declare dim mi as outlook.mailItem. We can then say for each i in fol.items. And let's, let's close the loop with a next i. I'd like to check that the type of item I'm looking at is a mail item. So I'm going to say if i.class equals ol mail, then I'd like to set mi to be equal to i. And then I can say debug.print vb tab just to indent the items information below the folder details followed by let's see let's have i uh, sorry beg your pardon mi dot subject uh, mi dot sender name and let's also have mi dot received time i can then write end if i can give the subroutine a quick test run view the immediate window just to have a quick look at the results and that's what we've got Clearly at this point, we're getting information about the inbox from the Andrew Gould account, not from the inbox of the trainee account, which only contains two items. This will always be the case when you apply the get default folder method to a namespace object. So what we need to do is think of an alternative approach to getting a reference to the inbox folder within the trainee account. 
One relatively straightforward way to get access to the inbox of the trainee account is to think of the trainee account as just another folder sitting within the namespace. You may remember from previous videos that the namespace is a sort of top level container for all of the items belonging to the Outlook profile. An account is really just another folder within that namespace. An inbox is a subfolder within an account folder and so on and so on and so on. If we can work out how to reference each of these folders by their names, we can fairly easily get access to the inbox of a specific account. Let's start just by commenting out some of the code we've written so far. I'm going to close the immediate window just temporarily. And I'm going to comment out all of the lines starting from set FOL down to next I. So I can highlight those lines and use the comment block button. Now we're going to reuse the FOL variable to loop through the collection of folders held at the level of the namespace. So in order to do this, we can say for each FOL in ns.folders. I'll write next FOL. And then what we can do here is say debug.print, FOL dot, let's go for folder path, and FOL dot name, maybe FOL dot items dot count, for example. If I were to just display the immediate window again, view immediate window, I'm going to clear the contents by clicking into it, pressing control A, and then hitting the delete key on my keyboard. I can then run this subroutine again. And what I get is a list of all of the folders at the level of the namespace folders collection. Clearly this is listing out the names of the accounts we have in this Outlook profile. So what I'd like to do now is loop through the subfolders within each account just to see what their names are. This technique I'm about to use here isn't really the best way to loop through the full sequence, the full tree of folders and subfolders and sub subfolders, of course. We have a separate video that explains how to do that in the most efficient way possible using recursive procedures. For now, all I would like to do is list out the folder names at the next level down below the account. So to make that work, let's declare a second Outlook folder variable. I'll call this one subfol as outlook.folder. What I can then do is give myself another for each loop within the first one, which is going to say for each subfol in fol.folders. So every individual folder has its own folders collection. If I provide myself a couple of blank lines and then say next subfol, and then within this loop, I can say debug.print. I'll use a VB tab character just to make sure that I've given myself a bit of indenting below each account name. And then I can say subfol.name or subfol.folder path or any other property that I like. Let's also go for subfol, subfol.items.count. Okay, I'll clear the contents of the immediate window again by selecting it, pressing Control A followed by Delete. And then if I were to run this subroutine again now, we should see something a little more interesting. We will hopefully see we have a list of all of the subfolders sitting within each account, including the inbox folder of our trainee containing two items. Now that we know that there is a folder called inbox sitting within a folder called trainee sitting within the namespace, it's fairly trivial to get access to that folder. Let's just close the immediate window to provide a little more space. I'm then going to comment out the combination of four each loops that I've written to demonstrate the principle. And then let's bring back the code that we commented out earlier by highlighting all the commented lines and then uncommenting the block. So what I'd like to do now is set my folder variable to refer not to a default folder. I'm going to refer to a specific folder within the namespace. So I'm going to say ns.folders and I can reference a folder by name by opening a set of parentheses followed by a set of double quotes and then entering the name of that folder. If I close the quotes and parentheses, I can then enter another full stop followed by a reference to the folders collection of that named folder. So in this case, I can reference folders, open parentheses and quotes, and then the folder name that I want to access is called inbox. Subsequently, all the code that I've written here will run as it did earlier. It will print out the path and count of items in that folder, followed by the details of each OL mail item in that folder. Let's just bring back the immediate window again and clear its contents by pressing Control A and hitting delete on the keyboard. 
And then if we run the subroutine one more time, this time we'll see the slightly unimpressive list of two items belonging to the inbox of the trainee account. Now that we have access to the inbox folder from the account that we want, we can do anything else to its items that we've seen in previous videos in this series. Just as a quick pointer to avoid going over old ground, that includes things like copying the details of the email from the Outlook inbox into an Excel worksheet. Or we could loop through all the folders and subfolders from the inbox of the second account using recursive subroutines, as explained in this video. Or you could even start to save the attachments from the items contained within the inbox of a second account. And information about how to do that is contained in this video here. What I'd like to do to finish off this video though is just show one alternative approach just to demonstrate that it is possible to use the get default folder method to get access to the inbox from a second account. So let's return to the VB editor and then let's just close the immediate window temporarily and we'll create a second subroutine in this routine, sub get inbox using stores. And let's scroll up a little bit and provide a little bit of extra space so that you can see more clearly what's about to happen. Much of the code in this second procedure will be very similar to what we've done in the first one. That includes most of the variables, if not all of them. So let's just scroll back up quickly and let's copy and paste this section of code, all of the variable declarations, along with setting a reference to the Outlook application and the namespace. We can copy those instructions and then head back down to the second subroutine and then we can paste them in. We won't need the second subfold folder variable, so we can remove that one. And the one other variable that we will need is something called an Outlook store. So I'm going to declare st as outlook.store. An Outlook store is simply a file containing all of the emails and other items belonging to a particular account. If you want to read a bit more about how a store object works, there's a rather large amount of documentation about it on the Office Dev Center. For us, the important thing is that a store object has a get default folder method, and it works in essentially the same way as the get default folder method we've already applied to a namespace object. The difference is that this method is specific to a particular Outlook account. What we'll do first is loop through the stores collection to see the names of all the stores we have access to. Let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor and having got references to an Outlook application and a namespace, let's say for each st in ns.stores. We can then say next st and then as usual, there are several bits of information we can print out to find some diagnostic information. Let's see, st dot, we can go for display name, we can go for file path, etc, etc. I think display name will be just enough for the time being. If you're interested in more properties, please feel free to have a look through the list. There's plenty available and they're all fully documented on the page I've just pointed out. Let's just have a look at what we get returned with the display name. If we view the immediate window and once again clean out its contents, let's just adjust the height of that window as well. We can run our second subroutine and there we go. Fairly unsurprisingly, the display names of the stores match those of the accounts we're looking at. Next, rather than just looping through all of the available stores, we can use our variable to capture a reference to the store associated with the trainee account. So let's either delete or just maybe comment out this for each loop. And we can use our st variable, we can say set st equals ns.stores and then in parentheses and double quotes, write in the name of the store that we're interested in capturing a reference to. From this point on, everything is, a, is exactly the same as if we had a namespace object. We can now set fol equals st dot get default folder. And then we can reference our ol folder inbox. And then we can loop through the items of the folder. In fact, there's no point in writing out all that code again because we've already got it written here. Let's just debug.print the folder path, uh, copy our for each loop from the previous routine. We can then just paste all that in at the bottom here. 
If I clear the contents of the immediate window again, we can run the subroutine one more time, and once again we get a list of all of the mail items belonging to the inbox of the trainee account. Okay, well I hope you found a couple of the ideas in this video helpful. I know a few of you have been asking how to do this since the uh, the most recent Outlook videos have been uploaded. So there you go, that's the couple of techniques you could use to get access to a folder in a separate Outlook account. Thanks for watching, see you next time.